All right, hi class. Today we're going to be talking about PLCs. PLCs are programmable logic controllers. Um, there is a different kind of component out there called a PLD, programmable logic device. Those are little chips. These are PLCs are big industrial com computers, um, normally installed on a rack like this, um, with lots of big wires coming in. The GE Fanooks are the ones that we have in the uh, instrumentation laboratory. You may have seen those. Um, so they're, they're industrial controllers um, marketed towards big installations. So ships are a big user of PLCs, power plants. Um, they were really developed around assembly line um, operations, manufacturing plants, things like that. People are willing to pay top dollar in order to have reliable um, operations. You don't ever want to have to shut the factory down because you used a cheap controller. Um, the other thing they have compared to something like an Arduino is there um, you don't have to do anything special in order to be able to drive higher current outputs from them. So you can turn on and off motors. They usually have relays built in. And their evolution is pretty different from a microcontroller where microcontrollers evolved from microcomputers. Uh, PLCs evolved up from relay systems. So they had conveyor belts and things that were running off of relays and they wanted to generalize that so the whole programming metaphor if you will um, is based on the parts of a relay so that's the thing we'll talk about next so to compare a PLC versus the microcontroller like the Arduino we've been used to the good things about a PLC compared to a microcontroller they're they're very rugged designed for industrial installations so they're reliable, um, they can handle higher power outputs, they're really good at switching and logic kind of operations, as well as timing and counting. What they're not great at, they tend to be pretty expensive because you're paying for that ruggedness and reliability, and the latter logic programming that we're going to use really doesn't handle large amounts of data if you need to do like an FFT, or you want to do vision processing. It can be done with PLCs, but normally there's a separate box that's handling the large amounts of data um, that you interface with. So it's not the native kind of format. Compared to something like a microcontroller, the advantages of an Arduino, they're cheap. They can do math, complicated math and data sets because they're programmed in C++, which can handle those pretty nicely. The output of an Arduino is limited to something like 20 milliamps. Um, so you need interface boards to, to control other things. Um, logic can sometimes be a little convoluted with the ampersands for AND and things like that. Not something you can't do, but uh, maybe not as easy. And they're designed mostly for inexpensive sales of hundreds of thousands, um, not having one or two that run over and over. So reliability is not the priority with a microcontroller. Okay, so relays are the metaphor, they're the, the, the whole concept of ladder logic is based on relays. So just to review, if you don't remember relays from the, the circuits lab where we did some relays, um, here's a picture of a relay. They're an electromechanical switch. So they've got an electromagnet that if you put power to the electromagnet, it pulls on some mechanical contacts and switches. So here's a picture, this picture in the middle is the layout of this um, relay over here. Here's the electromagnet. This part moves back and forth and there's a spring. So if there's no power to the coil, the common contact connects up here, which is the normally closed contact. So with no power, these are closed, they're connected. Um, and so power would flow this way. If you put power to the coil, then this little arm moves down and turns on this contact, which is the normally open contact, so it would close when there's power to the coil. This distracting little animation over here has a little bit different mechanical layout, but the same idea. Here's the coil. There's a linkage here that moves the common um, contact in the middle between the normally open and the normally closed. So if the relay is turned off when this button's up, common connects with normally closed, close this button, energize the coil, and this goes click over to the normally open and the light turns on. 
here's the references of where I got these if you're interested. All right, so ladder logic is the programming language we're going to use, and it was de developed along with PLCs around the same time, so that's the most common language to use. It's a graphical language, you draw it more like something LabVIEW or something like that, rather than a scripted language where you type it. A lot of PLCs have computers in them, and so you can program them in C++ and lots of other things. So then they kind of circle back around to um, things like LabVIEW or microcontroller. So um, we're going to focus in this class on ladder logic. If you do a lot of PLC work, there's usually a graphical interface that you have to also write a program for in order to make the PLC work. So if you've used the engines on the Golden Bear, uh, you don't look at the ladder logic program, although it's there, you are looking at the graphical interface. So these are generally done by each manufacturer differently, and so we're not going to spend a lot of time um, going on, we won't spend any time <laughs> in this class, um, but if you end up doing PLC work, you'll definitely have to learn one of these tools. All right, so here's a picture of a schematic for a relay. You can see the coil, the electromagnet that you put power to, the common contact then clicks down to the normally open contact if there's power here. The spring pulls common back up to normally closed if there's no power to the coil. So these are the three things, a normally closed set of contacts, a normally open set of contacts, and a coil that are uh, in a relay. So these are abstracted in ladder logic to these symbols, the normally open contact looks like part of a switch. The normally closed contact here has a slash through it, and a coil is either a circle or sort of parentheses looking things if you draw them by hand. So in ladder logic, everything is drawn in this format. So we have these power rails on either side, left and right. Those are the up and down parts of, the, of a ladder, and then the rungs of the ladder are lines of code. And so we draw them graphically, normally inputs and things on the left, and then things that we're driving, the outputs are over here on the right. And you can have lots of different things um, all connected on the same ladder. So here we've got a normally open switch um, and a coil. So you could read this as if in one is on, then power flows to output A's coil. So we connect the power and it starts on the left, can't go through until we push the button, then it flows and goes out to ground over on this side. This is a normally closed switch, so out B is on if in 2 is not on. So if in 2 is not on, then out B is on. So here are some real fundamental building blocks for PLC ladder logic. And this is an AND system. So we've got two normally open contacts and um, a coil here. So if in one is closed and in two is closed, then power flows to the coil. So the pseudocode looks like this. Ladder logic looks like that. An OR is the other side of the AND and the OR, the two common logic things. So here we have to put two things in parallel. So we have an, a half of a rung that comes over and connects back up. So if this one is closed, then the coil is powered through that line. Um, or if this one is closed, the coil is powered through that line. Um, or both. That's the OR configuration. The pseudocode is over here. This is used for things like homework assignments and tests to give you something to design the ladder logic around. So it's good to be able to write pseudocode from the ladder logic or build the ladder logic from the pseudocode. Okay, the latch is the last common building block here. And here we've got two things in parallel. So that's the OR configuration. And we've got a normally closed contact um, in series with those. So it makes an AND and an OR together. And then the, the big thing to notice here is that this is the output, the coil, and it's labeled motor. 
and then we also have the output here. So the motor is here and the motor, whether the motor is on or off, is also driving this contact. So the way you read that is if the start button is on or the motor is on and the stop, bo stop button is not on, then the motor runs. So if you press this button, it turns the motor on. Once the motor's on, it will keep itself on. You can let go of the start button and then the motor will stay on until you press the stop button which breaks this circuit and turns it off. So this is a really common setup for um, keeping something going like the power button on your laptop. This it was, was drawn in PLC Fiddle and we'll be seeing a lot of that coming up. All right, the other thing besides pseudocode is a timing diagram and so that is a plot versus time, so time on the x-axis and then the logic state on or off on the y-axis for inputs and for outputs. So here we've got two ladder logic diagrams um, and we've got the inputs for A and B, so A is on, off, on, off, on, off, and B is on, off, and so what you should do is pause the video and try to figure out what's when is C going to be on and when is D going to be on. We have A and B going into both of these ladder logic things. So take a second, think about it. If you could draw the timing diagram, then you'll do well on the next test. All right, is that what you got? So um, C is an and, result of an A. A has to be on and B has to be on. So here A and B are on, so C is on, and then for the rest of the time one of them is off. So here A is off, so C is off. Here B is off for the rest of the time, so C is going to be off for the rest of the time also. Now D is an OR. A or B turns on D. So if a or B are on, so here they're both on, here B is on, here A is on, so only in this little stretch are both A and B off, and then A is on again, so D turns on. So this is the OR logic based on these two inputs. All right, so let me show you PLC Fiddle. Um, I'm going to have you be making an account for one of the homeworks coming up. So. Um, I'll just give you a, a quick demo of what you can do with this website, PLC Fiddle. All right, so this is PLC Fiddle, uh, plcfiddle.com. Um, and it, if you go to the playground, you get a basic ladder logic setup. And you can add rungs and make your ladder logic here. This is the palette of tools that you can use. So we've got normally open, normally closed coils and a bunch of stuff that we'll see coming up. So these are the coils. And then over here, this is like the variable declaration or the memory. Um, with PLCs, you generally have to specify what, what you want to have. So um, we have something called input and something called output that we've defined here. And we can add more if we just type up here. Um, input 2, we want it to be a Boolean. For now, that's everything is true, false. So we would add that in. And so now this is declaring variables that we can use. And then if we want to use them, um, we can put down the tools and then assign them to the different variables. So now output is going to be on if input is on and input 2 is not on. So if I turn on input, you can see it turns green. This one's green because input 2 is off. So it's conducting, and so the output turns on. If I turn this one on, it turns off. Uh, on, off, on, off, and off, on, off, on. It's pretty fun. You can play around with this stuff. Other is where lots of things are. So you can add a new rung, um, and you can do the parallel things here too. All right, so if we just want to add something to make this into a latch. We're almost there. We can take this thing and put it here, that thing here, another contact here, 
there. We have to assign this one. So for the latch, we put the output controlling this set of contacts. So now if the input is on or the output is already on, then this part gets energized. And as long as the input, so this would be the off button, the start button is input, and the stop button would be input too. So if I turn this on, turn that off, turn that off. So starting with them all off, the motor's off. If I press the start button, the motor starts, and then I can let go of the start button and the motor stays on because the motor was on so it's latched on and it will stay on no matter what I do with the start button. The motor's going to keep running until I turn it off by pressing the stop button. As soon as I press it, the whole thing stops and I can't start it up with the stop button. So this is the latch. So you should try this out. The other great thing with PLC Fiddle is it actually has a bunch of tutorials here under Code School that you are going to go through. So look for that assignment coming up. Oh, and it reset. So one of the things you can do is you can save them here. Well, I think that's enough for today. Look for some assignments coming up on using PLC Fiddle to do some ladder logic testing and the tutorials from PLC Fiddle. So if you can't get to PLC Fiddle, uh, send me an email because I'm assuming everyone's going to be able to do this. Um, and I hope you're doing well and staying healthy, and I will talk to you soon.